Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another rendition of No Holds Barred, our sort of bookends to the journeys that we go on here on the channel, and as you can see, this one is no exception to spectacular gameplay, spectacular story, and spectacular voice acting. Yes, my friends, we have continued our run through the Batman Arkham series with Batman Arkham City, one of my favourite games, actually. One of it, one of the most brilliant RPF uh, fighter brawlery adventure games I've ever played. I don't know what genre it would probably fall into actually, but definitely action adventure, absolutely brilliant to start with this game. Well, from the top down, uh, graphics, graphics are absolutely stunning, but especially on modern hardware, we're currently playing it on PC with uh, Ryzen 7 950X and an RTX, NVIDIA RTX 2070 Super. Everything's cracked to maximum. Few graphical glitches here and the game's locked at 62 FPS, which really annoys me. And, and oh, I say graphical glitches, the physics goes a bit weird sometimes. So I go into a room and all of a sudden the papers just jump into the air and then drop down. Or Batman's cape billows for no apparent reason. I, somewhere the physics goes a bit screwy. Also, yeah, as I was saying, FPS is locked to 62 FPS. Don't know why. Not in the mood to go tinkering in the any files on the principle that the game steams to... I don't want to destabilize the game. So 62 is fair enough. Game doesn't drop below that anyway on the hardware I'm running it on, so that's fine. Um, also, no borderless windowed. Sounds like a small gripe. Really annoying gripe. I, I have to usually flick between different windows while I'm streaming, and the fact that I have to go into the Steam desktop overlay to do things if I need to, it, it's just it, irksome, to be honest. But other than that, yeah, game looks absolutely phenomenal for a, what's it, a 10 year old game at this point. If not 10, then very close to it. But it is still, graphically, it still holds up. Gameplay wise, it still very much holds up. Some of the parkour stuff can get a bit annoying, especially if one is against the clock, as we've discovered in the Harley Quinn's Revenge DLC, where I tried to defuse the three bombs, uh, defuse the two bombs in three minutes and. I didn't because Batman decided he wanted to be an acrobat more than he actually wanted to be the world's greatest detective, but hey ho. Story, story is, yeah, out of the Batman Arkham games, the two that hold up the strongest is still very much Arkham Asylum and Arkham City on the principle that the, I think it's the lead writer, and somebody in the comments may have to correct me on this, lead writer also worked on Batman the Animated Series. They have woven a fantastic game here, tying the narrative into Batman Arkham Asylum, into Arkham City. The cast, brilliant. Uh, Kevin Conroy, still an absolute legend, still one of the, still the, as far as I'm concerned, definitive voice of the Dark Knight. Mark Hamill reprises his role as the Joker, still, once again, my definitive voice for the Joker. All the other voice actors, apart from maybe Tara Strong, nothing against Tara Strong, but I'm just not a massive fan of her Harley Quinn voice. It, something about it gets on my nerves a bit. But everyone else, absolutely phenomenal. Loved Hugo Strange's voice actor, loved the Riddler's voice actor. Reprising his role from Arkham Asylum, I think, Especially in some of the character unlocks, you can unlock some interview tapes between Strange and Riddler, and they may just be my favourite thing ever, because listening to these two insane, very clever men bickering back and forth was just entertaining to me, so what can I say? In terms of our 100%, we have not done a full completion of this game, but we have 100%ed it. So we have done all of the story missions, all of the side missions, all of Batman's upgrades, all of Catwoman's upgrades, all of Catwoman's story missions, all of Catwoman's treasures, all of the Riddler trophies and all of the Riddlers and then, yeah, so we, we've finished everything that's possible in this game. Oh, and in terms of the Harley Quinn DLC, we did all 30 balloons. Though be warned, you can miss balloons, as I've discovered, so we had to run through Harley Quinn's Revenge twice in order to get everything. I, apart from an achievement, you don't seem to unlock anything extra for doing 100%, that's unfortunate. We didn't do the... Riddle's Revenge stuff, I'm not doing the challenge maps, that'll take up too much time, so yes, we're just locking this 100% to the story, which I'm perfectly fine with, we've experienced at least everything that the story crafters wanted us to do. Where have we got to? We've got to voice acting story, phenomenal for those of you who don't know, following on the heels of Arkham Asylum, Arkham Asylum has been closed, closed. the Joker is ill and dying, uh, Hugo Strange has, through mysterious means, purchased a large chunk of Gotham City slums and turned it into an open-air prison. 
Bruce Wayne, in an attempt to get it closed down, is ambushed at a rally and locked in the asylum with the inmates. Only, you know, he gets to a rooftop and becomes the Batman, and then it's Batman's job to figure out what's going on and the mysteries that surround it. I won't spoil the story. If you've never played this game before and you don't feel like watching for a while, let's play a bit on here, right here on this very channel. Well, go and play the game. You could, I, you'll probably pick it up fairly cheap in a Steam sale, and I can highly recommend it. 10 out of 10, well, maybe not 10 out of 10, 9 out of 10, there's, there's a few bits and pieces. But other than that, yeah, I, maybe 10 out of 10? I'd love to give any game 10 out of 10, to be honest. It's just the way I am. I, I can always see a few bits and pieces. Anyway, uh, music as well. Music, one of the best scores. This main theme, for example, which I'm going to get a copyright claim on now, is phenomenal. It's one of my favourite tracks in gaming. It's just such a brilliantly orchestrated piece. All of the music's brilliant orchestrated in this game. Once again, the cast of characters are fantastic, and I'm rambling now, so yes. I think that's everything. Have I missed anything? Combat, the free flow mechanic, free flow combat mechanic. I know I'm retreading gameplay now, but it's just let me have this. Free flow gameplay mechanics, still absolutely amazing. It's my favorite fighting mechanic in any game. Yes, even more than Yakuza. I mean, Yakuza has some pretty awesome moments, but nothing says awesome like Batman just leaping back and forth, just comboing people into oblivion. That's just absolutely amazing. To the point where, when I've had to switch characters, they feel a bit lackluster. We played the Catwoman stuff, as I said, and her fighting style... I like how they make each fighting style unique. Catwoman isn't as strong as Batman, so hers is more focused on acrobatics and fast, speedy movements to get around people. She doesn't have the same level of gadgets as well. Whereas Robin seems to be a sort of middle ground. He doesn't hit as hard as Batman, but he hits harder than Catwoman. He's not as agile as Catwoman, but he also he stuns people for longer with his staff. So it takes a bit of time to get used to each character, but once you manage to get into the guts of the mechanics, then each one is fantastic to play as. But I'd still say Batman wins out overall, because come on, it's Batman. Um, until you watch this back, you have no idea how perfect that uh, things jump in the air moment is. <laughs> with the hand movement, such perfect timing with the game. Fair enough, there we go. Um, also, now that chat's distracted me, um, da -da 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 -da, free flow fighting mechanic. Uh, oh yes, new things added. So, like uh, Batman takes the point of doing the thing of every other game and well oh not doing what most other games seem to do and you start a new game and you've forgotten everything nope you still have all, the majority of your skills you better so you still have some upgrades you can implement obviously because they need to add some extra new stuff to the game but you can also expand on what you knew in Arkham Asylum so apart from the few gadgets that you haven't brought with you for story reasons well obviously gameplay reasons mainly but story reasons you haven't brought X, Y, and Z gadget with you because it's too heavy, weighs Batman down, but anyway. So you unlock gadgets as you go, but you start out pretty much with the same gadgets that you start you gained by the end of Arkham Asylum. You've pretty much got a lot of the same, you've got all of the predator moves from Arkham Asylum as far as I can tell, and then extra stuff you unlock adds to Batman, which is just, I love, it's absolutely brilliant. And the grapnel boost, which means that you can now glide long distances, and who doesn't love that? Okay, now I think that is everything. I think I've covered everything. I'll, if I remember anything else, I'll add it in the pinned comment down below, but either which way. With that said, yes, I can highly recommend Batman Arkham City. I can very much say that Batman Arkham City still holds up very, very well after all of these years. And I... I kind of want to play it again now. <laughs> I want to 100% it again now. It's not a very long game, it's not too complicated to 100%, especially in contrast to the likes of Yakuza. But our journey moves on, and we're on to a new destination for the next stream. So, with that until our paths next cross again, dear samurai. May you have a beautiful evening, morning, or afternoon, wherever it is around this whole wide world you are. And as always, I'll see you all next time.